God bless you. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock, also known as Mr. Sam Lopez. God bless you. God keep you. God protect you. God guide you. God give you everything his word says he will give you. But we have to play a part in this whole receiving from the Lord thing, right? We have to believe to receive. Amen. If you don't believe in God, somebody asked um, last week, um, what is the, is there any sin or any sins, plural, that God will not forgive? And I said, no, God will forgive every sin. There's nothing I did, nothing you did that could not be forgiven except from blaspheming the Holy Spirit, which is sometimes I don't even think people know they're doing it. Um, but God says that's the unpardonable sin. But from what I'm seeing in the scriptures, God has a way of dealing with that as well. Amen. Because he's a just God, a merciful God, a graceful God. But what I think is the unforgivable sin is the sin of not believing. Because if you don't believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior, the scripture says in, in John chapter 3, um, around 17, 18, um, around there, read it for yourself. Right after um, the gospel message where um, whosoever believes in the Lord shall not perish, but have eternal life. It goes on to say why people don't believe in God and how our, how our hearts are already condemned for not believing. So if you don't believe in the one who could forgive you, if you don't believe in the one who could forgive your sins, then there will be no forgiveness of your sins because you don't believe. So I believe that is right there is the unforgivable sin, the sin of unbelief. Amen. And that is powerful because God is always opening up his mouth through people, through his word, through nature, supernaturally, naturally. He's always opening up his mouth and giving us his word and giving us his invitation. So today I'm talking about you are invited. We are invited by God, amen, to his kingdom. You are invited. That's today on the Morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock. And we're going to pick it out of um, Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16 around that area. So we're going to discuss what this verse would mean or could mean to you and how it could transform. transform. I was going to say transform. I was going to say confirm and transform. So I said transform. Is that a word? A combination of those two? I'm going to pen that. Transform. I like that. He could transform your life. He would confirm his word in your life. Amen. And he would do amazing things that even, you know, we as believers sometimes don't believe what he's doing in our lives. Amen. Do you believe it? Do you receive it? This morning on the Morning Devo, you are invited. You might be like, me? Yes, you are invited. God is no respecter of persons. Amen. As a matter of fact, if he could change me and he could give me that invitation. Amen. I have no reason to believe that he can't invite anyone he wants to invite to his table. Amen. Because he's a God of mercy. He's a God of grace, a God who loves. God is love. Amen. He's just and he's holy. Amen. All powerful. Yet he has a gentle spirit. He's all knowing. He knows every thought that we have and he loves us beyond that. Amen. He's omnipresent everywhere here. Amen. God is amazing. God is amazing. And if you don't know who God is, amen, get to know who Jesus is and you will find God because Jesus is God. Amen. And that's an amazing revelation. It has to be revealed. This thing can't be just, you know, taught to you and then you believe, or you can't be just convinced by another man that God exists. God himself will reveal himself to you, show up in your situation, show up in my situation, and then it's undeniable about his powers, undeniable what he can do in a life, simply by saying, okay, God, I'm here. You said I'm invited, I'm here. Let's get this party started, right? So I'm gonna give you 60 seconds to share this out, and when we come back, we're gonna be in Hebrews chapter four, verses 15 and 16 around that area, amen? Because you are invited. Share this out. Here's 60 seconds to do it. I'll be right back.
back. We're back. The fastest 60 seconds. I still didn't have time to finish sharing this out. Amen. Um, wow. 60 seconds goes by really, really fast. And wait, I guess I did get them all. Hopefully you got the invite on my Facebook group through my pages, through the other groups that I share all over. I'm about to get banned from some of the groups because they, they say I'm promoting myself on their website. Okay, it could be. It's all a matter of opinion. Uh, amen. But this is a gospel message, a morning devotional. Amen. I'm just sharing what God gave me this morning to everybody online. Amen. So if that's self-promotion, I don't know. Uh, I'm guilty then. And I'm always talking about Soul Winners, the website. Amen. As a way of as an evangelistic tool for music. Um, clean, family-friendly music. Amen. Soul Winners with a Z.org. You see it on the screen. Uh, thank you for all the listeners that have been popping up lately all over the globe. Amen. On someone is with a Z dot O R G. Amen. It's amazing to see numbers when you're like, okay, um, wow, it's a lot. Amen. And God will send and invite the people he wants to the website, right? He'll invite them and then he'll use the website as a tool to reach out to everyone he wants to reach. Amen. The word over this ministry um, years ago, I think it was like 2006, 2007, he said he's going to reach 1 million people with a life-changing download. Amen. This is exactly what I heard from the Lord. I didn't even know what a, it was, an LCD, life-changing download, download. And I was like, life-changing download? What in the world is that? And then he said, you're going to create a podcast and you're going to say, podcast, time out, podcast, I'm a, because I'm a, I'm a, I was a Windows guy for many years. Now I'm on Mac, but I was a Windows guy. I didn't know what a podcast was. I had to look up the word podcast. That's how I knew it was from the Lord. And then I realized what a podcast was. And I started streaming a live Bible study, a Bible study. It was an hour long, too, when I first started it. And I was like, this is no way going to work. But I'm trusting God. And he said to do it. <clears throat> so I'm going to do it. <laughs> so I put it on. It was a telephone back in the day. 2007, 2008, you have to dial in, put all these codes in, get on the telephone. It was like a conference call, amen, and it was on a phone, and I was like, wow, that's that's a lot. So then I said, this ain't going to work, and then I started noticing later on that there was um, thousands of people listening, and I was showing my wife, I was so excited, I said, look, babe, within Two or three months, I already had thousands of listeners. I had a thousand turns to five thousand, then five thousand turns to ten thousand, and then I had to get off that network because it was so like it was on the phone. Like the quality was horrible, but yet people were calling in. They were, um, you know, chatting, live chat on this network, and it's all moving by the invitation of God. God will invite you. You, it's, you know, you take the invitation, confirm the invitation. Amen. Say you're going. Amen. And God will show up in that situation, any situation. When he tells you to do something, believe he, believe me, he will do it. He will get it done. Good morning, Sister Lissette. Good morning. Blessings to all. She says, whoever comes on here, amen. Whether you're on with me live or you come on later, amen, or share this out to your friends so that way they could get a grab and get a hold of what God is doing through the morning devos. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. Hebrews 4, chapter 15 and 16. This high priest of ours, which is Jesus. Jesus is the high priest. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses. For he faced all, A-L-L. -L, remember how I feel about the word all. That's a God word. When God says all, it's all. Face all of the same testings we do. Yet he, Jesus, did not sin. So yeah, we're weak human beings or we sin because we're weak human beings but God shows up in my weakness what about you does God show up in your weakness according to the scripture Jesus the high priest understands and then that understanding part amen that's powerful he understands it's not like he's pointing a finger at you and pointing a finger at me and saying you see that's why you know I'm gonna take away the invitation I'm a I'm a re re redo this invitation you're not invited anymore no god invites all of us and because he understands our weaknesses he's there with us and for he faced himself jesus when he was god man on this earth he faced all of the same testings 
we do. Test things because God cannot be tempted. Amen. Um, he will test us because he knows he passed all the tests. And now since he, Jesus passed all the tests, we can pass the test of life. Amen. When things happen in life. Because he's with us and he understands. Yet he himself did not sin. No sin. Zero sin. There was a poll um, that was going around where young Christians, millennials, and the poll was like, do you think Jesus ever sinned? And an uh, overwhelming percentage of people say, yeah, he must have, he must have sinned in his man when he was in, here as a man. So the generation right before me, right, um, says that um, the generation that's coming up right now says that Jesus sinned pretty much according to the polls. You know, I can't confirm the polls, but that's what I saw. And the stats are overwhelmingly like Jesus. Yeah, he did sin. That's what people say. That's what people believe. But the scripture says opposite. The scripture says that he did not sin. So let us come boldly, boldly, not like, oh man, I, I don't know, how did I get here? What You were invited. So let's come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. Time out. Where is God's throne? Do you know where God's throne is? Let me just greet some more people here. My beautiful wife, Uni Lopez, is on with us. Good morning. She goes, my poppy. <laughs> good morning, poppy, she says. And good morning, everyone here online, she says. Lisette, good morning to you. Um, where is God's throne? I mean, you can look it up. You could Google it. Um, where is God's throne? The word of God says where his throne is. Because it says, let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. And I'll take liberty. Not only is God gracious, he's merciful. Amen. To our merciful God. We don't have to be shy when we get this invitation. Listen, I was a club promoter when I was in the world. Amen. And now I promote Jesus. Amen. And I promote godly music. But before I wasn't promoting Jesus. Before I wasn't promoting godly music. Before I was promoting clubs. And we would make these flyers by the thousands. We would go to Midtown Manhattan and get these things done. They would be done in an hour. And we would get them done. Get these 5,000 flyers. We'll get rid of all those flyers in like in a day. A day or two if we were lazy. But it was an open invitation to all who picked up that flyer and looked at it. They could go. They could go. They had to pay. Um, sometimes you, you know, there was some time slots where it was free to enter. Amen. But after that free to enter, you were paying to get in. This invitation right here is to the throne room, not of a club, but the, to the throne room of God. Amen. Where is God's throne? Anybody want to answer that? Amen. Good morning, Sister Joyce. Good morning, everyone. God bless you, she says. Amen. Where is God's throne? Does anyone want to answer that before I answer it? I mean, I know the answer. Amen. It's in the scriptures. Where do you think the throne room of God is? Because he's asking us and he's inviting us. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. Amen. Where is the throne of God? Where is it? There we will receive his what? His punishment? His no. Where what will we what will we receive in the throne room of God? Will we receive his his discouragement? Will we receive his curse? No, the Bible says there we will receive his mercy. Mercy and we will find grace. So mercy and grace. We will find grace to help us when we need it most. Like when we need it like yesterday, going to boldly to the invited place. We are invited to this place. Amen. We are invited in heaven. Yes, Sister Joyce. Yes, Sister Joyce. The throne of God is in heaven. The Bible says that heaven is his throne and this earth is his footstool. That's how big and mighty and powerful God is. Can you imagine that? Heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. You know what a footstool is? That's where we rest our feet, where we put our feet up. And that small, you know, usually is a box square, right? I have one in my living room, you know, a footstool. Or some people use another type of footstool to step up. Amen. 
to bring them to a higher place. But heaven is the highest of heights. And that's where God's throne is. He's inviting me. He's inviting you to his highest place, to heaven. Amen. To boldly go. You don't believe it, right? Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. This high priest of ours, Jesus, the high priest, is inviting us, even though we're weak, even though we sin, he does not sin. He is not weak. He's inviting us to see and get involved with his invitation. So let us come boldly. You don't have to come like, oh, I'm an unexpected guest. No, you are invited. I am invited to his throne, to his throne of our gracious God. We are invited to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive everything. I know the Bible says we receive his mercy, but his mercy to me is everything. His grace to me is everything. So I'm saying there we will receive everything we need to live this life out. Amen. And it's a glimpse of what we're going to, how we're going to be living in, with him for all eternity. So if, if you don't see that, I'm excited about that. Then you must not be seeing what's going on here. Amen. I, Sam, and you. The viewer, the listener, the person that's just flying by this video, and then you stop because God stopped you. Amen. He wants to invite you to his throne of grace where you will find and receive, amen, his mercy. And we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Amen. We will find grace when we need it most. So according to this verse, Here's another question. According to this verse, why does God have compassion on us? You ever wondered that? Listen, mercy, I look at mercy like this. Compassion is the outworking of God's mercy. Amen. Remember when, when Lazarus, his friend, died and the sisters sent word to Jesus. And when it got to Jesus, Jesus wept because he had compassion on the family. He, he felt the hurt. He felt the hurt in their hearts and their families. They lost their brother and he had compassion, mercy and compassion. Compassion is coming from mercy, right? Compassion is the result of mercy. When you have compassion for somebody, when you have compassion for the hurting, when you have compassion for the sick, when you have compassion for the poor, when you have compassion for the homeless is because you're humble enough to see that there's a need, there's an issue going on. And because of the mercy that you receive and I receive from God, amen, you have compassion for other people. And that's what causes us to want to help others. Amen. Mercy, grace, mercy, compassion, all goes together. Amen. You're going to find that out in life quick. And during this COVID-19 whole situation, we found out as believers if we were compassionate people or not. And I truly see a lot of compassion all around the world for every believer that I can see that is doing something for others. Amen. Because that's what we're here to do. Amen. We have Holy Spirit God living here with us, in us, on this earth. And we're showing the world mercy and compassion. Amen. Because we received mercy. And not only did we receive it, we were invited. Amen. We were invited. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. So according to this verse, why does God have compassion on us? Does anybody want to try to answer that? Amen. Because he loves us. Yes, babe. He loves us. He loves us. That's a great answer. Why? Just because he loves us. Why did Jesus die on the cross for me? Why did Jesus die on the cross for you? Because he loves you. He was moved. Um, by compassion um, on the cross when he said, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive Sam, for he does not know what he does. Amen? Because when Jesus was being crucified on the cross, he had me on his mind. He's the all-knowing God. Amen? There's not a time in history that God has not been thinking about me and that God has not been thinking about you. He knows all people all over the world. He knows our hearts, knows our thoughts. Amen? But he's, you know, he's he comes to the humble. He's attracted. He's going towards, amen, and he's keyed into the humble. And he resists the proud, the proud people, the people who think they have it all together. They don't need God. Or even if they have God, um, they think that they're superior over people because now they have more or, I don't know, anointing power. Or I don't know what people think. 
Christian, I don't know what Christians think, what they think they have more Holy Spirit than somebody else who's saved, but there's people who walk around with this pride and God resists the proud. He'll use the person for sure. He'll use those people for sure. He'll use them to get his message across, but he himself with those people, he's actually resisting them. Amen. And that's why they get frustrated because they're like, I have, I'm anointed, uh, I'm appointed, I'm sent, I, you know, move nations and everything. But why do me and God have like an issue? And it's frustrating to the people because they have pride and pride. If pride is an issue, you can't hide pride. It shows up. You can um, um, put pride away on the side or whatever like that. God wants you to humble yourself. Amen. And I found out out quick when I first became a believer. Amen. I said, I'm going to stay humble. And this prideful thing, I don't want to be resisted by God. I want to be, you know, closer to God. So I, I remain humble. And people say, oh, oh, I could do this better than you. I'm like, hey, praise the Lord. Oh, I, you know, I, you don't even know what you're doing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, your morning devos, you know, they're just, um, you know, extractions from the Bible or whatever you want to call it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, I could do way better um, morning devos than Brother Sam. Praise the Lord. I remain humble because I want God to be, you know, close to me. Amen. No pride up in here. Amen. If there if it was pride up in here, God will see it. Amen. Shut things down because he deals with me like this. If something is not from him and I'm trying to say it's from him and try to give it to you, he'll shut it down. He's done it before. Amen. And he'll do it again. Because he loves us. Sister Mary says he created us and he loves what he created. Amen. God created us and he loves what he created because God don't create junk. He doesn't make mistakes. And I know a lot of people in this issue is very sensitive. So I'll be I'll be mindful of it um, because it's happened to me and my wife. We we gave my wife gave birth to children that were sick. So you think, OK, so was that a mistake? Was that a curse? What was it? You know, and. People would actually tell us that's for God to get the glory. And I used to I used to get a little angry about that. What do you mean, what do you mean that God gave us a, a child, to a sick child, for his glory? I didn't know what that meant. Amen. And so we went through this life of, of bearing children sick and then listening to his promise, him sending prophets, evangelists, preachers to say the same word to us. I'm not, and I'm not talking about just from um, Pennsylvania. I'm talking about from all over the country. And people will say the same word over me and my wife. And we're like, yeah, okay. I mean, I guess we have to believe. In 98, I wasn't a believer. In 98, when it first happened, when we first had our first daughter, I wasn't a believer. I was seeing the activity of believers praying and, you know, trusting in God and believing in God over this child that we first had, our first daughter that is not here. She's in heaven. She's been in heaven since 1998. Yeah, July. I was in, uh, yeah, you know. She seven and a half months. She was alive, um, so from ninety eight to ninety nine. If I'm saying this correctly, my mind is right now. But seven and a half months she lived, and she's in heaven. Amen, in, in glory. So there it is. God got the glory, didn't he? Then our second child that was born out of the womb was also sick, did not make it out the hospital, and people were saying the same thing to us. And reminding us of God's promise for our children, whole, healthy children, and saying that God will get the glory through this. And, you know, you hear this and you're like, try to put your mind around it. You're like, what do you mean? God got the glory out of that as well. Amen. Out of that child helped us with our faith. Amen. And her name was faith and put us, you know, on a track to believe, stubbornly believe in the promises of God over our lives. So. The invitation is for us to stubbornly believe that we are invited by the high priest himself who understands our weaknesses, who understands what we've been through, who understands what we lost, who understands what we're going, what, what we're facing right now on this earth. He understands our weaknesses for he faced all of those things. God knows, God the Father knows what it feels like to have a son die. God, the father, knows what it feels like to lose a child for temporarily, but to lose a child. And for us, it's temporarily, too. You ever lost a loved one and they are in the hands of God? They were believers in Christ. They're Christian, born again. It's a temporary loss because in all eternity coming, amen, we will be reunited 
I believe that God will reunite the families, amen, that trusted in God, believe in God, born again, amen, babies too. I, I believe that babies get uh, a free pass into heaven because they're children, amen, they're babies. And God is not an evil God up in heaven saying, okay, I'm going to wipe all these kids out and send them to hell. Why would God do that if he's a holy, just, merciful, gracious God, amen, a loving God, a holy God, he wouldn't do that. Not my God, at least, amen. So there in the, in the throne room, which we are invited to boldly come in there. Listen, I'm not talking about going in there diddy bopping. I'm not going to be like, yeah, I'm in the building now. I'm not going to be like that. I'm going to be face down probably. I'll probably be, you know, crawling on that place because I know that's where I'm going to receive from God, like one on one, right? Receive his mercy. And mercy is God not giving us what we do deserve. Amen. Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. Right. Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. And mercy from God is us holding back what we do deserve. Amen. So I'm looking at it like this. I said, wow, if it wasn't for God's grace over my life, if it wasn't for his mercy, where what would be the outcome of Sam Lopez? It would be curtains because of what I did in my past. Amen. And thank God that these white hairs show that I lived long enough to know what the past was. Amen. And you have a past. I have a past. And God has mercy and grace for our past. And, you know, he, he, he said, forget about that. Let's walk forward from this day forward. Amen. Because we are invited by God. So what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts about coming boldly to the throne of God? Amen. What are your thoughts about that? You are invited. Amen. Are you going to accept the invitation or are you going to reject the invitation? We get invitations online all the time through Facebook and all this events and stuff like that. Sometimes if I can't go, I'll put maybe because maybe I can, but maybe I can't. Amen. So I'll put maybe. Um, maybe I'll put no if I, I'm not available. Amen. Um, but the person who sent the invite wants you know you to say yes. God is sending us an invite. And why are people saying no? Oh, you know, I don't deserve to be there. I'm afraid or whatever. Boldly go to the throne room of grace of God. Amen. Where you will receive his mercy. You're invited. Amen. Don't be afraid. You are invited to the throne of God. So what are your thoughts about coming boldly to the throne of God? Amen. Me? I know it sounds weird or something, but... um. When I go and I've been there, amen, people are like, yeah, okay, you've been to the throne. Yeah, I've been there through pain, suffering, hurt, loss, amen, doubt, unbelief. I had to go to the throne room to receive his mercy, amen. And then when I receive that, it powers you up. God knows I'm weak. So, but when I go into that room, I get, I get, I, I come out of there all powerful, amen, because he fills me with his mercy, his grace, his love, his, his word, amen, and the Holy Spirit, God, gets the glory out of all of that. Amen. I can't wait to see our children healed and have them healed, hold, delivered, waiting, happy. And then be like, what took you guys so long? <laughs> Where were you guys? Uh, you know, it's going to be a crazy um, situation of, of love and uh, how God reunites all of that. I faithfully accept the invitation each and every time I go into prayer. Yes. And prayer when you're communicating with God the Father. Amen. You are actually in one of the throne rooms. I don't know how many throne rooms he has, but I know for sure the scripture says heaven is his throne. The earth is his footstool, you know, and I have a, a verse that said heaven is heaven is his throne. The earth is his footstool. Jesus is the rabbi and I am his pupil. Amen. Follow Jesus. Follow the teacher. Follow the Lord. He will guide you to the right place. He will lead you to the right place. He is inviting all of us, amen, to his place, his throne room, amen, to go there boldly. And, you know, it's probably angels, all, all kind of stuff um, in his throne, in heaven, amen. And he is inviting us there, amen. But in the meantime, if you're going through something and you feel weak in your life, you feel you have a lot of doubts, you feel um, whatever the situation might be, just remember that you are invited. You are invited. You know, we have to convince ourselves sometimes that me, 
Why would God invite me? Well, I have another question. Why would God even be mindful of me? Amen? Why? I don't know why. All I know is that he is mindful of what's going on in this world. He's mindful of you. He's mindful of me. And he's inviting us to his throne room. So you are invited on the morning Devo. I hope you were blessed. Amen. God is amazing. Sister Joy says, amen. Love being able to go straight to God for myself. He's always waiting to hear from me. Yes, he is, Joyce. He's waiting to hear from Sister Joyce. It's, it's powerful to get prayed for when, see, when a person comes to me or you and says, hey, um, can you pray for me? That's powerful, yes. But what's more powerful than that is you yourself, who you are invited to speak to God, to pray to God firsthand. Amen. To go to him because you were invited to go to him. And the Bible says it's clear. He would not turn anybody away who goes to him. He won't turn nobody away. Amen. It's an open invitation. Amen. And that's the greatest invitation that God has offered um, us here on the side of eternity. And when we're saved, amen, we already have um, the past, amen, to get into heaven um, for the eternal life. But in the meantime, while we're here, when he sees what's going on in our lives, he sees our weakness. Amen. He's also saying, OK, you could boldly come to the throne, um, you know, come and it's open two, four, seven. Amen. Uh, I don't see it anywhere in the scriptures where um, his throne is closed. Amen. I don't see it. I could be wrong. I could be right. Amen. But I've never seen it. Thank you, Brother Sam, for God's word. Amen. You are so welcome. I'm out of here. God bless you. God keep you. Remember always, family, that God is good. Um, if you were blessed and you felt in your heart that you want to be moved to compassion for others, amen, you can help this ministry, help other ministries by going to the website on the bottom right of the screen, um, djsamrock.com forward slash donate and see is a little, a little paragraph of what we do and why we do it, amen, and so on is ink. And also, if you wanted to share something, but you didn't want to do it live, maybe you had a question, comment, prayer request, um, you know, whatever that you wanted to share, but you didn't want to share it because, you know, you want it to be private. Amen. Let me just show you my email address. So that way you can email me, you know, 247. Amen. I'll get back to you when I see the email, get back to you as soon as I can. Amen. You could communicate like that. Also, if you want to... Um, donate and a way through paypal you could do that right there at that information on the screen as well um and also that's very secure amen paypal is a well-known um company payment portal and also right there is my cash app you could give your best seed listen the best seed that you have amen is the least amount of money that you feel you could give and also the most amount of money that you feel you shouldn't get. <laughs> That's your best seed because it's between you and the Lord. Amen. Let God use you um, in that place. Amen. There's no like, oh, you know, I've, I've literally heard people um, that preach and that teach and that are evangelists or whatever the case. They say no less than, you know, they don't they don't want to receive a uh, donation or support, but no less than twenty dollars and all that nonsense. Listen, that's nonsense. Let God speak to you. It could be 25 cents or it could be $25,000. Listen, let God speak to you because he'll take the seed that you give and that you sow into his kingdom. Amen. For his purposes, for his plan. Amen. He could take the seed that you sow and you, you'll have your own harvest after you um, send that seed. So um, I'm not, <laughs> I don't play those games. I, I literally laugh when I see um, people do that. And I laugh in a cautious way because it's not really have a great weekend as well. Let's set amen to you as well. It's not really like funny. Ha ha. When people do that, they do that to manipulate people, to put guilt over people. Oh, you know, if you send less than twenty dollars, you know, uh, you know, that's not you know honoring God. Listen, I don't play those games and I pray for those people, those evangelists that try to manipulate people to get money, man. It's not right. It's not a good look for the kingdom of God. Amen. It's not the invitation that Jesus <laughs> invited us for. Amen. Um, not to, you know, there's prophets out there that speak word and discern the times and all that. And God uses them as mouthpieces. Amen. But not to make a prophet. P-R-O-F-I-T. They're prophets to prophesy the word of God, not to um, prophesy or prophesy lie to make their own profits and that that's not cool at all so god bless everyone have a blessed day and weekend my wife says 
Uh, Sergio, God bless you, man. Good morning as well. Amen. And I'm out of here, though. So listen, again, God bless you. God keep you. Remember always that God is good. And remember that you are invited out of Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. You know, read the whole chapter of Hebrews. Read the whole book of Hebrews. Amen. You'll be amazed at what God is offering to people and what he's confirming to us as believers as well. Amen. And you can share this with an unbeliever. So that way, listen, they know they could be getting an invite real soon. Amen. They know they could be getting an invite real soon. Amen. All you got to do is rewind the tape, Sergio, and you can see it from the beginning. After I go off, I'll send it to YouTube, and then it's a, it should re, be able to replay like in like five minutes or something like that. All right. God bless you guys. Peace. Love you. Have a great weekend. Blazing Bible studies.